Uh, welcome everyone to Get to the Point series on this webinar today. Um, and on the show, we have got Sean Green with us. Sean, how you doing? Yeah, good. Thanks, Amra. That's good, man. Thanks for being here. So for those that don't know Sean, Sean is currently at Missouri State where he's a student athlete on the men's soccer team. We started working with Sean probably towards the end of 2017, start of 2018. Uh, we helped him through the process. He went to Missouri State, but recently he has just gone through the transfer process. So today we're going to be talking about transferring as a D1 college athlete, um, you know, the difficulties that people face transferring and sort of the processes around that. And then we're going to go and get into why Sean chose a college that he is going to be transferring to. But I guess to start off with, Sean, why did you want to go to college in the first place? You know, you played at a really good level in Auckland. What sort of pulled you uh, towards the college system? Um, I think the biggest thing for me was uh, one, I had three passions that I sort of wanted to do after I left high school. Um, obviously, being successful at soccer or f in football, um, I wanted to continue doing that. Uh, at the same time, I had a bit of success at university, um, at high school, sorry, and I wanted to go and do university, um, go and study. And then at the same time, I always, always had this thing in the back of my mind. I wanted to do some sort of like OE or overseas experience. Um, and as I sort of went along high school, I figured that actually the States would be a really good option to sort of combine all those sort of three things together. They've, uh, it's an opportunity to go and live overseas and do my own thing. Um, gives me the ability to play college sports uh, and at the same time earn myself a degree, you know. So it didn't really seem like there was any better option than to go and go to America and do that, combine all three and enjoy myself. So, I remember meeting you, we were at, uh, with Chris Zoracic and your dad, and those yeah. that don't know Chris Zoracic, he's the former all white captain, currently the head coach at Western Springs uh, Football Club or Soccer Club here in Auckland. And, um, you know, I met you and you walked in and I was like, Dan, that is one tall year 13 student. <laughs> like, you are an absolute beast. And I was just thinking, I was like, yeah, college coaches are going to absolutely love this kid. And then when your dad, I remember your dad saying that, you know, you used to like be competitive and nearly win like all every cross country champs that you've been in. And I was like, I can totally get that. And so I, yeah. I guess like being a central midfielder, is that sort of why you fell into that position because of your athletic ability? I think so. I think it was a matter of being able to run the field um, all day, um, basically be in every spot, do that work right forward, but also be ready to put in the hard yards when you're back. So um, just seemed like the perfect fit for me. Um, keep running, you know, so that fitness really shines through and, it's one of those strong points to try to bring to my game every single time I play. I remember, I mean, it's amazing when people say to me, Amrit, you know, like how long was a college process? You know, it could happen like you could get a deal within two months or you could get a deal within like, you know, 12 months. It really yeah, depends. I mean, we're, we're, I'll be jumping the gun here right now, but this transfer process, for example, has been rapid, let's face it. You know, <laughs> it has. I mean, what, four weeks? I think it was. Must be. I think it was yeah. Easter weekend. Easter weekend was the first time I'd gone in touch with them and we haven't even got out of April yet. So Yeah, literally. Honestly, it, it's crazy. And I guess like the earlier you start, like I mean, you started um, pretty early in your in your college process, you know, the start of year thirteen, uh, sort of the end of year twelve. Yeah, so I was I think it was towards maybe the third month of year thirteen. So I mean yeah. compared to what you're generally saying on your website, a little bit later. Um yeah. I wouldn't say that's something to be criticized uh you're still making your mind up at that point and i was still a little bit unsure i had a chance to speak to some of the guys when they'd come back for christmas holidays from university and the year yep. above me so i had a chance to speak with them and understand what life was like and recognize if it would be a good fit you know, yeah so i mean taking that extra time to think about it you know so absolutely i mean like you know a lot of student athletes now starting the college process at the start of year 12 because it allows them to do more time for the SATs, but I tell students, like I had a parent contact me on Instagram last night and said, you know, my my daughter is coming towards the end of, you know, year 10, sort of into year 11, like should we start the process? And I said, just hold off a little bit yeah. uh, because it's a big commitment, you know, for the parents and the athlete. There's a lot of time that goes into it and you want to make sure that, you know, that this is something that you really want to do. And, you know, like, like you said, you started in the third month of year 13 at the start of year 13. I mean, that's absolutely fine. Um, you know, but just some coaches know when their seniors are graduating. Like I know your coach at, at Missouri State right now will be looking at 2022s and also keeping an eye on some 2023s as well. And we're sitting here in what, April 2021. So, yeah, yeah I mean, it's it, it really depends like how ready you are to make that decision. But obviously the earlier the better because there's less spots filled. 
with different programs yeah. as well. I think, I think um, the biggest thing to keep in mind is um, as you're going through those processes, as you're starting high school, is to think about the potential. You have the opportunity. There's a few requirements they have with the subjects you're taking and that sort of thing. I got a little bit lucky in that regard because a lot of my stuff, I'd sort of been successful in high school and managed to take all the required subjects that they wanted to see. Um, but I think that's something really important if you're going through those year 10, year 11 um, years, try and keep your core subjects in, in together and make sure you're doing well in those if you really think that the States would be a good opportunity for you because that's what they're really looking at. So It's honestly crazy. I, I got um, an opportunity to guest speak up at the Northern Football Club last week um, oh, up great. in Bangarei. And, you know, they had like an open day because it's school holidays here in New Zealand right now. So they had an open day yeah. and they wanted me to come through and do different like college talks to different age groups throughout the day as they were doing mm -hmm. like rotations. I was speaking to like year nine and 10, you know, guys that are like 12 to 13 years old. And they knew, like I was quizzing them at the start to see what they knew about the college system. They yeah. knew so much. I mean, wow. I'm 28 now. When I was at, uni when I was, sorry, when I was at high school at New Plymouth Boys High School, um, shout out to them. Um, honestly, like I, I had no idea what college was until like year 12, year 11. Like it's honestly crazy. I mean, yeah, that's where you came in and was really helpful, man, because I was similar to that, sort of gone to that uh, year 13 year, still really inexperienced. Family was still really inexperienced. We'd heard a few things from the guys that had already headed over. Um, but, yeah, you just really made that the transition really smooth. You sort of knew exactly what you were getting yourself into. You knew where I'd be able to be successful. Um, and, yeah, ended up being able to give me the opportunity to talk with coaches and take it there with my own limb, you know, so... I oh, appreciate the love, man. That's what we're here for. <laughs> um, so, you know, you spoke to coaches. You know, I remember talking to the head coach, Michael Seabolt, who's had a very successful career. You know, what are you guys ranked right now in the country? Um, I think we actually got up to second on the RPI rankings. And we had a bit of a bad result against Loyola at the end of the season. I think that dropped us down to about eighth. Um, but the lads now can um, qualified for the national tournament, which is fantastic. Second year in a row, really buzzing for them. Um, so let's see what they can do. I think the first game's on the 2nd of May, so I can be tuning in for that. Absolutely. And before we get into, you know, like you, why you, like we started talking, you know, a month ago about the transfer process and, you know, you, you called me and said, I want to try and find a different opportunity. Before we get to that conversation, why did you decide that Missouri State was a good fit for you? And what, what things do you like about Missouri State? So I think the first thing that came to my head was just the first connection I had with Seawalt was really good on the phone. Um, he seemed like a really positive guy and we had a really good conversation. Um, got on with my dad well as well when we were talking. Um, and it seemed like a, a place or a person I was willing to work with and put the hard yards in. It seemed like he was not going to take any rubbish, but he also wanted his players to succeed. So um, seeing that it was a growing program and it had some success in previous years, that was also an exciting factor. And the other part was uh, there was a few Kiwi guys that were already playing at the school. Um, so for a young lad heading over to a new country for the first time, first time living away from family, um, I think it makes a bit of a difference having a couple of other people there from home that you can associate with. So those sort of three factors um, were probably the biggest influences, you know. So a progressing program, um, having some people from home you can relate with and then just a really good association with the coach in those first calls. Yeah. Yep. No, that's really good to know. And so you, you arrive at campus. I mean, a lot of students ask me, like, do a lot of athletes get homesick? And I said, well, some athletes don't and some athletes do. How did you deal with that? Um, I think it was in patches. I think the, the worst time when I was getting homesick was towards the end of the year. And you'd still be on, like, Snapchat and Instagram following your friends and that sort of thing. And as those guys start heading out of winter and back into summer again and you're starting to get into those winter months, all you're watching online is just people heading to the beach or having an adventure <laughs> and stuff. Yeah. And meanwhile, we're all over here grinding our ass still, um, getting school done, coming down to finals weeks and stuff like that. So those are the periods where I felt a little bit down. Um, but for the most part, I knew a lot of the other guys they had that same feeling and we were able to just sort of get together and bring ourselves up. And, I always tried to be that guy that brought the positive attitude and said, hey, look, we're being super successful this season. Um, let's just keep doing it and let's see how far we can go. You know, Let's make the most of this opportunity and we'll get to see our families soon enough. So. That's awesome. That's awesome, man. And um, I mean, OK, let's talk about the transfer process. You know, So we, we were contacted by you, I guess, like just over a month and a half ago. And yeah. you know, we sort of had a discussion a little bit about, you know, 
some some things that you want to do um, career wise, and you know yeah. you've got how many years of eligibility do you have left? But three, right? Uh, three years, yeah. Yeah, and so you're like, I want to maximize these three years of eligibility left. To me, you know, COVID gave you an extra year, which is great. Use it. <laughs> um, yeah, and so, so, why why did you want to transfer? Um, I think the main thing was just a matter of being here for three years now, um, and then sort of still being a bit more of that squad player, um, not really being able to push and get all the minutes that I was wanting to. Um, I spent the nine months back home as COVID first struck, so ended up skipping a semester and doing a couple of online classes while I was back home just to try and stay engaged and show that I wanted to come back to the university. However, I wasn't really prepared at that time. And during those nine months, I had the opportunity to play with clubs back home, uh, head back to my hometown club, Birkenhead United, and get some game time in there. And um, being able to run around on that field and celebrate wins or deal with losses as a team together um, sort of made me realise how much I was missing that competitive aspect of actually being on the field and putting what you do in practice um, into the game. And obviously had high hopes when I sort of came back. I wanted to really make that impact and sort of be the guy to uh, step into the squad and make a difference. Uh, I thought like I had the experience to sort of try and make an impact. Um, but I guess it never really took off and... At that point, I sort of realised I had the three years left um, and was willing to just get back to doing what I enjoy, which was playing football, being in a side where I could be competitive and try and lead a team, you know, so. It's tough to make those decisions, eh? I mean, like, oh, that's where I, I take my hat off to you. Like, honestly, I, we've worked with so many athletes and, you know, every time I talk to you, and this is, other people have told me this as well, that know you, like, you know, your cell, uh, when, you, when you think about things, it's so well put together and, you're very professional in that way. And so, I mean, I was blown away when you've spoken to me and you're like, you know, some people are like, I'm going to want to transfer, like, you know, because of this situation and this situation and the conversation goes, yeah. every, you're like, I'm, I want to transfer because, you know, I'm not yeah. getting enough minutes and I really want to use, I, I want to be in a, in a team where I'm really making an impact. I was like, okay, mm -hmm. let's, let's go. So, I, I mean. That was like, one of, that was one of the hardest parts to me as well. I'd taken a lot of time to like internalize it personally. I yeah. I didn't really speak to a lot of people about it. I sort of had housemates uh, mention it too. And it sort of brought me down a little bit. I I knew that idea was in my head and it was sort of making me feel bad that I was going to be leaving such a close family of guys here. Um, like, like all due respect to these guys. They're a fantastic bunch of lads and really hope they're going to go far. Um, hopefully I can come back and be an alumni from Missouri State one day, whether it's in 10 years or 20 years' time, and see these fellows because I really love them all. Um, but, yeah, I had, had to make that choice to me personally. And at the time, I just figured I want to go and make the most of my three years, go do some postgraduate study and, yeah, make the most of my experience over here in the States, you know. so Absolutely. So the transfer process for those that are watching is it's quite difficult, like, you know, Sean is a student athlete at Missouri State on, on contract. You know, he signed a national letter off the team. He's part of the team. So per NCAA rules, he's not allowed to go and start calling coaches while he's still part of that team. So um, what Sean had to do is go get a release, which is like tell the athletic director he wants to leave and then tell the coach as well. Um, and then once that's all signed off, he's put onto this thing called the transfer portal. Now, at that point... You know, your soccer coach and your athletic director know that you want to go somewhere else. So now it's like, okay, now we need to try to find another program. If not, you know, I don't know if your coach will bring you back onto the team because you want to leave. Mm -hmm. And so the transfer process can be quite risky in that aspect. Luckily, all our athletes that have been in the transfer process have been given opportunities. Um, yeah. which we're very grateful for. And so, you know, we sent out your CV. And then I remember talking to you saying that, you know, I got a message on my phone from, um, the assistant coach, uh, Kyle, from Winthrop University in South Carolina, Division One school. You spoke to Kyle. How did, how did the conversation go and what made you like Winthrop? Um, I think just from the first buzz, it went fantastic. Like, really sort of clicked with the guy. It seemed like I was actually a player that they wanted to have in the squad. Um, they were ready to give me an opportunity there. Uh, it seemed like they had a really good environment and sort of the thing I was looking for. And then at the same time, they're also offering the degrees that I was interested in doing. Um, so it's sort of straight away from the first go. I, like you said to me earlier, I sort of had my ideas of where I wanted to do and why I was transferring. Um, I had my boxes lined up and Winthrop basically came along and more or less ticked every single one, you know? Um, so it kind of made it hard to say no. And then 
eventually from there i sort of took it on my own limb again you got me started and then managed to take some time to go and get in touch and talk to a few of the players managed to get a call on the um get a call with the head coach and the assistant uh, and really cl click with them as well i didn't feel like anything was hidden from me i just wanted to be up front and let them know what the program was about where they were trying to go um, what sort of um, facilities and uh, program they had going on at the moment um, and I like that transparency. I think it was really cool, and I wish I, I, I wish I would be the same. You know, I hope they yeah. view me as the same sort of uh, transparent person and prove and show them what I'm going to bring. So, yeah, really positive conversations with the coaches, and just felt like, like I said, ticking all the boxes that I was looking for in a new school. That's awesome, and for for us, like as a recruitment company, like you know, our responsibility is you. You're our first priority. And, um, you know, we work, we work for you guys. And the way I sort of operate myself is like, okay, you know, your parents have trusted me to look after you. And so yeah. we need to make sure whichever environment you go into, you're going to be safe, you're going to be protected, you know, the coach is great. And I think it's impossible to say that, like, you know, every, like, recruitment company has been to every single university in the States because there's so many. Yeah. And, you oh, know, with, how many is there? Like, over 9,000 or something like that? Something like 4,000, like, just over 1,200 in the NCAA. Like, honestly, there's so many programs. Yeah. And it's 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 nuts, man. And so, like, it's really important for us that, like, you know, we use our connections to find out about the program that you're going to. So, like, for those that, like, know how my connection is with Winthrop, you know, I used to be f very good friends with, I still am friends with John Collins. He was the men's tennis coach at Winthrop University. Unfortunately, they lost their program due to COVID. However, you know, John Collins was roommates with the assistant men's soccer coach, and John was like, hey, go talk to my buddy Umrit in New Zealand. Um, you know, he's got a bunch of soccer recruits, and that's how we started developing that network. So when I get, when I get a phone call from a coach that I trust, I get excited. And like yeah. this guy said, I'm you know, like who have you got? And I, I told him about you. I sent your video to him. You know, he jumped at you right away. He was like, This looks like the perfect player. Like, we've just had an opportunity to open up. Let's try and make it work. So, you know, A, like I'm really excited that you like the college that you're going to and you like the your chemistry with the coach is good. But B, I'm I feel really happy because I'm like you're going to an environment where I know you're gonna be protected and you're gonna be safe and it's gonna yeah. be a lot of fun as well. Um, and there is another Kiwi lad there too, really which nice. helps. So, yeah, that's good. managed to link up with him on the phone, which was pretty epic. Um, got an understanding, just listened to what he had to say. And honestly, again, positive vibes only. Um, sound like a, they're heading in a really good direction. Um, nice sort of professionalism about him as well. He's looking to succeed and hopefully kick on to somewhere else after university. Um, so I'm hoping I can bring the same attitude and, yeah, like I, like I said, make a difference and show him how it's done, you know, so... That's awesome, man. So what are you doing now? So in terms of like just letting people know about, okay, so, you know, we've, we've now accepted an offer from Winthrop University. You're going to be joining the men's soccer team. Uh, what kind of loose yeah. ends are you tying up right now at Missouri State before you transition to Winthrop University? Um, so at the moment, I'm not training with my team anymore. I've stepped away from them, um, obviously staying in contact and following all their games, uh, like I said, because I appreciate the guys and want them to succeed. Um, but for the most part, I'm sort of training on my own. We've got actually another boy in the squad who's transferring as well. So we've actually been getting out most days of the week, um, training, doing our own sessions. You know, it's quite good to get some individual work and focus on a lot of the stuff that you don't get the chance to do in training as much. Um, and then at the same time, also using this last period to get to the gym and try and put on a little bit more uh, bulk. There's a couple of guys I've been hitting with more or less every single day. Um, yeah, obviously it's a bonus that summer's coming around as well, you know. So <laughs> body's ready, but yeah, that's a lot we've been up to. Um, nice chance to focus on school and make sure we do well in finals and hold that GPA high, so that when I do transfer over, that everything looks good and admissions are willing to accept me. Um, I think the last thing I've got to do is just get my unofficial transcripts released and then have them sent over to Winthrop so I can get the uh, financial aid agreement released and put put pen to paper, you know. So. Absolutely. We're nearly there. Very, very close. Um, but things are moving very smoothly, which is great. Yeah. Um, in terms yeah. of, you know, what you're going to be studying there. So when are you expecting to finish your undergrad and what is your strategy postgraduate wise? Like, have you got to tell people about what you're thinking academically? Yeah. So one thing I've got a couple of um, sports management, sports science degrees and their master's program, which will be available to me. Um, I'm currently studying, studying exercise and movement science here at Missouri State. 
And I think uh, I was about 75% through my degree here, coming to the end of my junior year. Um, when I go to Winthrop, I think I'm going to lose a few credits and put me a little bit behind. Some of the general education classes I've taken don't transition over, but I'll still be sitting at about 65 or so percent um, of completing my degree. So hopefully I get a chance to do some summer classes and try and accelerate that undergraduate to a point where I can uh, spend the last few years of my time there. Um, either doing some sort of sports management or um, sports administration degree, you know. So that would be good to gain some postgraduate study and really make my time here worth it, you know. That's awesome. That's awesome, mate. And uh, is there anything else that you want to add to any students, you know, any advice you could give them um, about, you know, those that are thinking here, like that are sitting like two years away from high school being like, wow, like, is this going to happen to me? It might sound scary, but, you know, any advice that you can give to them? Um. I think it's a matter of just going with your gut, you know, you know yourself best, uh, how things are going. Um, for me, I can't discredit Missouri State for the things that I've learned here, you know. Um, it's been a fantastic opportunity to be part of such a top class program that's willing to succeed and put um, their work rate out there every single day. And I've learned so much from Seabolt and the group of coaches here. Um, and obviously it's hard, like I said, to step away from that, but we make that next step. And I think it's just that gut feeling, you know, you sort of know what's best for you. Uh, you can have conversations with your friends and peers and mums and dads, but uh, when it comes down to the why, you've got to do what's best for you. And sometimes um, making that selfish decision almost and saying yes to that next step is uh, the best thing you can do for your life, you know? So. As I said, guys, what a well put together young man. <laughs> Not many people can. Thank uh... you very much, man. No, nah, honestly, man, not many people, you know, have that mentality, but um, it's great great to see. And I look forward to watching your games online. I mean, for those that don't know, Sean's dad was also a great football player, played nationally as well, represented Absolutely New Zealand. Right. So, yeah, talent talent runs in the family for sure. Got to give your dad a shout out. <laughs> um, but, hey, thank you so yeah, much. Absolutely. Um, yeah, thank you so much for being here, man. Appreciate it. Uh, look forward to keeping in touch. Let's tie up these uh, loose ends with Winthrop, get everything sorted. Yes. I'll chat to you on the phone after this call. And, um, yeah, we'll just keep releasing these talks. So if you like this, we're going to keep doing a lot more webinars with students and coaches. The more we can educate you guys, uh, the better. All right. Thank you so much for joining. Awesome. Cheers, Amrit. You have a good rest of your day, man. Nice. Call Cheers, man. Cool. Bye.